so this morning is just a round table. It's where we can go around the room and discuss. Um, we're light, but um, it is already seven. Um, I'm going to be up front before we start everything. I am very under the weather. Um, so I am at home um, drinking tea and honey, trying to find a voice. So um, we may just keep it short and sweet and just touch in with each other and not worry about anything else, if that's okay with you guys. That way I know what's happening, what's going on, but maybe not going till eight o'clock and then I can go crash. <laughs> maybe. So anyway, um, let's just, let's just, there's five of us. Let's just go ahead and start. And if someone hops on, they can join us. Um, but we can go around the room and then I can give you some updates from the chamber also um, and what's going on. But David, let's start with you. You've got some stuff going on and we'll just, we'll just do this. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I think you all know me or at least know my face through the screen. So yeah, we're kind of now in a waiting pattern. We, we had received quite a bit of money from Oregon this last 14 months for down payment, over a million dollars. We've given out over 600,000 of that already. Um, we still have money for veterans. We still have some money in Hood River County and city. Those are CET funds. So those construction excise tax funds do work, Phil. <laughs> I'm sure you're for it anyway, but um, they do work. You know, we've been able to get some money out that way. Um, we do have applications in with the state of Washington for, um, what was the number? In the end, it was $3 million we asked for for down payment funding in Quickitat, Skamania counties. If you do the numbers with these interest rates, we had to come up with $200,000 to make homes, roughly the homes affordable in Skamania County and 100000 in Quickitat County to make them affordable to people around 80%, 90% AMI, area median income. So those are really large numbers. We're not sure if the state's ready to see those, you know, when it's a rural area, but high cost, it's probably kind of not the normal for them, but we have that application in. Joel and I had a meeting with them, um, I think it was earlier this week, <laughs> it was like longer ago than that. Um, and I don't, I don't know, I felt it went pretty well, we'll see. Um, and then that'll be for 20, 10, 10 down payment loans in each county. And then we also applied for over a million dollars, about a million and a half for construction funding for the Carson site for the Community Land Trust. So if we get that money, that'll get that going and we'll start construction as early as, well, we have to start at least something by about June or May of next year. It's going to be a slow process. We ordered, I think I might've mentioned this one other one. Um, we ordered the... Um, big electric transformers, you know, the green boxes you see every three or four houses in a new subdivision, those are a year and a half out. We <laughs> paid for them and now we wait a year and a half. So we can't do too much before then, or we could, but we're kind of waiting for that. So anyway, hopefully those will both get funded. At least one of those will get funded. Um, those are some fairly major things going on in Washington. Huh. Now the funding that you have left for the veterans in Oregon, that's just the down payment program? Right. Okay. No other funding. No, this. I mean, the the housing authority has, um, as as far as I know, still uh, set aside for vouchers, so people can get rental assistance through the government. Um, and there's not a wait list for that. Um, they don't always have, so you can get to the front of the wait list, but you still may wait until they have available vouchers. Okay. So you don't have to wait if you're a veteran. Um, and a couple of other categories. I think women. Um coming out of domestic violence and with a referral can get uh, ahead of people. But the the agency itself has to be pulling names off the wait list to get off the wait list. And that doesn't always happen. Sometimes we go months without that happening. Okay. All right. Any questions for David? All right. Okay. I'm going to skip right over to uh, County Commissioner Phil Brady. Good morning. Yeah, this is kind of a dark. Uh, we're going to be coming into uh, daylight savings time here soon. Since we're just doing a roundtable, the buzz on daylight savings time and it's moving to standard time, it, it is hard on everybody's bodies to make that time zone shift. If we were going to settle on one, the healthier one would be to stay on standard time. Um, going into daylight savings time into the winter, our kids would be getting up and going to school in this dark. Our bodies would be getting up in the dark. And that's not good for our bodies because um, we would not ever get 
our bodies associated with getting up in the, in the light. We wouldn't, our body wouldn't be getting that light cue that it's time to get up. And so that would be a, um, an ongoing disruption. Um, so if we are going to do one, stay with standard time for myself. I like, I like the little shift. Uh, it does, I know it does cause uh, some health elsewhere, but if we were also to stay on one time or the other, um, that's going to cause a lot of traffic accidents and things. So it's, um, the, the, the legal part of it is it's up to the Oregon made a <laughs> decision. As I recall the, to stay on one zone, but it didn't decide which zone. Is that right? And I don't it, know. It was weird. It was weird, <laughs> but it's up to the federal government to give us a waiver to do that. And we'll, we'll wait and see what, you know, that that's a big question for the federal government to try to ask at, at this point. Um, I, I'm, my life is going well here in the in the uh, community at the county. I'm not quite up to, to this to morning either. Um, the just what goes on at the county government. Probably the big moves that are happening are we are moving into the Gobi building. We've had um, DLR Construction. It's a nationwide, worldwide group come in and work with us to do a space planning. For the deal uh, for the Gobi building to find out what's the needs of our people and how we can fit into the building efficiently, I'm looking to have that building be an upgrade so that it becomes a very welcoming place, a, a landmark in the community, so that people say that that the county government has a place and uh, here's where you can find everything you need in county government. We're also moving on what's now the 159 acres. Uh, uh, west of town, just west of Chenoweth Creek. The first step is we're going to try to put a, um, a trailer park back in there. Bert Hodge has had a trailer park in there at one time, and we can, there's um, water and sewer in there already. It'll take some work. That'll be a little kind of test the waters with the scenic area and Friends of the Gorge um, to see if, if we can do that. We're we're really going to try to do this cooperatively with the Gorge and the friends to move it forward. Um, okay. At the same time, I've been working with the Soil Water Conservation District. They've had interest in doing a restoration work on Chenoweth Creek. And now that um, the county has the middle section from 10th to uh, Highway 30, um, and they can do a restoration that, in, that will do the whole the whole reach of this of the creek all above 10th street all the way down to the mouth and um, give that give the Chenoweth Creek some love that kind of moves us in the direction toward the scenic area hey look we are trying to make this area um, a recreation area restore the wildlife and in that area and um, and also yeah, make it make it usable as a good place for the community Looking around on, on my list of things that I'm up to, um, the, um, the other th things that are going on, uh, Macaque is getting raising the building at the Gloria Center. Uh, it's a metal building. If you can drive by on 7th Street, just be impressed how much it's come going up. It's um, And uh, so that'll... I think that might be ready by January. It's um, okay. impressively quick construction. A lot of things were going to be happening there. Um, they'll become wraparound services. Um, who is all going into there? Um, the the CAC office is, is going to move into that. Um, I know the Columbia Gorge Health Council is going to move into that building. So the, the space will become an active full, full place. That's great. Okay. Um, I can kind of leave it there. Other things happening or kind of just the regular meetings, keeping the county running. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, do you know how many RV spots that they're hoping to be able to do out at that property? We had a map and it had, I'm going to say at least 20, okay. I think more than 30. Okay. Um, there was one um, strip of them that was probably too close to the creek for floodplain reasons that might not be able to fit in. Okay. But, but it was a lot. Okay, good. 
we need them. So I was just curious on the number. So um, yeah. thank you. Yeah, that's an estimate number. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Just from my mind looking at a map, but I don't have that map. Okay, thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. Um, any questions for Phil? You got him front and center right here. If I'm, I think I mentioned this last week. Uh, Mike Ballinger is uh, putting on a slideshow. If I can share my screen. Um, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, putting on a slideshow of, of a kayak trip that we took. Did I mention this last week? Maybe. I don't think so. Okay. At the um, community college. Let's see. I need a little more permission to share screen. Up oh, there it is. Thank you. Where to go? Now I don't. I was able to share a screen and then I. You should be able to now. just to get the now bottom. Okay, it just yeah. moved. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, so in September, I mentioned that I did a kayak trip from Rowena to Astoria with PK, Mike Ballinger, and Bob Kenyon. And Mike's making a slideshow of that that um, oh, okay. at the, at the um, public library on November eighth. So okay, we, we've connected it with the book "The Great River," which is a really beautifully written reflection on the Columbia River. It's it's impressiveness. Lisa, awesome. could, I put, could I drop this into community calendar? Would that work? Yeah, yeah. Please do. Just go right okay. to the community calendar and add that in there. That's okay. great. All right. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thanks, Phil. Uh -huh. OK. Sure. So with that, we'll go to Scott McKay. Um, I hope you feel better, Lisa. Thanks. You're making me. And a couple of things. One is I need to give a shout out to Jody Chastain, who um, does transportation in southern Wasco County. I always had the idea he just did Southern Wasco County, but he provides rides for those in the Dallas who need to get into Portland because oh. there's many older adults who aren't really able to access the the great uh, medical ride transportation that the um, right. the link and the and the trans public transportation system does. The one of the frustra frustrations and I guess wishes is that I wish. When you make an when an older adult makes an appointment in for OHSU or one of the uh, metro hospitals, that they would consider the distance that that person has to drive, yeah. and instead of making an eight thirty in the morning appointment, yeah. make it something later in the after in the morning or the afternoon. Jody is transporting someone into Portland on Friday. He referred someone to us, the Circles of Care, to see if we could get any volunteer to drive someone into Portland for an 8.30 appointment. And we were able to get Kay Fortin, Vaughn, Kay and Mark okay. um, came forward and was willing to do that drive. But that's a that's a heavy ask. It's to, an early you know, drive get, through yucky traffic. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. was, her, she's, her husband has an appointment and she's, she does not feel comfortable driving in the, in right. the Portland um, traffic and we can all empathize with her yeah. so the yeah. other thing is so just a shout out to jody for what she's what he's doing and and kate and mark the oh uh, i had to write these on my hand so i didn't forget them the the rita went down my wife rita rathke she's on the library board okay. and she went down to mopping for a meet a library um, board meeting and she was thoroughly impressed by the once again by the Maupin library down there and so that just reminded me it'd be nice to have Kate come and and speak again just another update of as far as what's happening in southern Wasco County and I think they're doing some a lot of great things though okay. and the last thing is that I appreciate that kayak trip that Phil Mike and Pete and I forget the other person did, but I, but Phil, I saw Mary Jo at the pool yesterday. Huh? I said, you know, we need to swim the Columbia. We don't need to be weaklings like those 
like Phil and those guys where they have to have kayaks. <laughs> we'll swim it and, and show those guys. But yeah, she didn't go for it. Yeah. And so. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So I think I think that's it. So I'll, I'll end there. So Lisa can get back to um, resting. Okay. What about Brian? What do you got for us, sir, Grandpa? Just waiting for the two little monkeys to come here. I mean, you may see a couple of little blonde heads shortly, so um, keep them busy. And I think Phil's suggesting about uh, daylight saves time. I would suggest we just all move south of the equator for the winter and get over this, you know, go sit in a nice sunny beach someplace. And that would be my suggestion. So, <laughs> so someone's got to stay and do work. So. Uh, you know, I, I wish I could do that some more, but I just can't, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. I get it. Job I've ever had, so just like I, and Scott, you did a good job last week. Thank you. You uh, appreciate all you do to help folks in the local area. Hopefully, I'll get back involved with you again one of these days once we have a little breathing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian. If you go move south, you can. Um, you have to go quite a way south to to get into a different season. If you're anywhere in in the in the tropics. Yeah. It's it's rainy season, dry season, and this the amount of when I was in Venezuela, it was just 15 minutes difference between uh, uh, July and December. It, um, it was weird. There, Crazy. There's, there's yeah. several South Pacific islands I could recommend. You could try that. <laughs> the beaches um, are white and warm. So <laughs> I want to give a quick shout out too to to our David Peters here. You, He's been uh, working at housing, was it 27 years? You had your um, anniversary nice. this week? Nicely done, Dave. Oops, you're on mute. The famous, famous phrase for Zoom. And you're still muted. Yeah, sorry. Um, there you go. Yeah, it's been the people more than the job that have kept me here. <laughs> I mean, I, I enjoy my job more when I was doing more counseling, but, and I was talking to Lisa about, you know, managing people is not as fun <laughs> by far. So, uh, but no, the, the group of work here, of course, has been new people all the time, but it's been, it's been a good experience. Yeah. You yeah. do have an excellent, excellent team there at, uh, in your office. It's excellent. I don't think I'm, Teresa made it like 32 years at the district. I don't think I'll make that long. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, the chamber is doing a few things. Um, <clears throat> we're getting ready to do a mailing out to all of the, the membership. And in there is our schedule for events and sponsorships for next year because we want to give them up to all up front so people know what's happening. Uh, we'll also have the nominations for the awards banquet that's coming January. This is where we're nominating the woman, the man, the business, the youth. There's a list, um, but nominating them for an award. Uh, we will also be looking um, for future nominations and suggestions for the board of directors for the Dallas Chamber. Uh, this is where a chance of our members can actually nominate somebody and then it'll go forth to the nominating committee and then it'll be vetted through there and then we'll, we, uh, we'll produce a ballot next spring. Um, so that is happening also. Um, we will be launching tomorrow on our website both the Starlight Parade and the Veterans Day Parade um, application. You can go fill it out online. They're already at the office in print form, so you can just pick one up and fill it out if you want to. Uh, that will be November 11th for the veterans, and then it will be the day after Thanksgiving um, for the Starlight Parade Um and I'm madly trying to go to the month. So I can give you the exact date. That will be the 24th um, that we will be doing that. And then of course, Shop Small Saturday is the 25th. So those are just a few of the things that are happening. Um, we will be doing, <clears throat> I believe the business after hours is going to be the 16th. Uh, it'll be that third Thursday. And that will be at the Columbia Gorge Discovery Center. So that should be fun. They should partially be decorated for the holidays. Um, should be a fun one to do that. Uh, that is what we've got going on. I'm continuing to do work with the 
uh, grant. Uh, we just finished our DEI training yesterday with a Latino emphasis with the next door for our team. Uh, we will be starting the focus groups next uh, with Latino based businesses. Uh, we will be contracting some of that work with Blanca Flores um, as she has already been doing some amazing work with some of our small businesses uh, Latino owned. So we'll be continuing that work and hopefully have a big chunk of it done before the end of the year. Um, and then uh, we just finished uh, the nonprofit training that was offered through the Google grant. Um, we had 75 people sign up for that. It was fabulous to see how many people came. Um, and we are in the process of doing that follow-up. Six applicants will be able to, they'll qualify and be chosen to do one-on-one -on -one a uh, 90 minute session with Allison. And then in the next three months, we'll be scheduling out a Zoom call uh, for, she thinks she laughs, but ask Allison basically. Um, it'll be Zoom for those who attended. If you didn't attend, then you cannot hop on those calls and we'll be doing three of those, one a month, uh, probably a 60 minute session so that there's some follow-up that way. Uh, we heard so much good feedback from that, that it was thorough. They were amazed. They were surprised. They were shocked. They made a list of immediate to do as soon as they got back, which is what we were hoping to do. We were hoping to educate and provide what is the best practices, what should you be doing as a nonprofit so that we have healthier nonprofits in our community. Um, we felt it was received really, really well. Allison did an amazing job as to explaining, uh, putting it in perspective and prioritizing what goes first. Um, so we were very pleased with that. I'll be giving a report to Google this next week as to what they accomplished by doing this for us. Uh, we are thrilled with that piece of it. And then of so. course, you've got downtown events happening. Um, just be cautious on Halloween, it will be full. You will have lots of little kids all over the place. The Dallas Main Street, uh, downtown the Dallas and the Dallas Chamber uh, have joined efforts and we're trying to have the best ever trick-or-treating for our kids. So, because, you know, you got to go to taking care of nonprofits to taking care of kids. That's what you do. So um, those are just a few of the highlights that we're doing um, in this next couple of months. Let me give an echo of how well the nonprofit training went. I'm I, as, as I sit on lots of boards, I'm hearing people say, okay, we went to this uh, training and we need to do this and that. It's already awesome. being put into practice. Um, Love it. That's, it. that's what we were truly hoping for. Thanks, Phil. I need that feedback. Sometimes yeah. you wonder if it fell on ears that were listening, um, but I am so glad we did it. I learned lots and I've been in the nonprofit organization for a long time. So it's always with the ever changing laws and ordinances. It's like, oh, we probably should be doing that. That's a little bit better practice to do that. So it was really good info. But um, any questions from anyone? Yeah. For, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, no. I just two questions for you. One, how is the funding for the county budget? And also, when when do some of the properties for Google come online as far as into the tax base to help? build that i mean what, oh. what's the timing for that that's yours phil yeah <laughs> go for it it's, it's been 15 years since project one uh, was, um, was begun and so project one uh, is starting to pay pay property taxes and so we and i think i'm gonna say i'm gonna throw once again i'm not a great numbers guy in my head i can see i think i'm on paper i like equations more than numbers uh, I think it's about a million dollar boost, and so uh, can you know expect that every uh, what's by like a four year cycle is was the I think so yeah the steps of project two three and now four um, right. so that will just keep rolling on into the future. Right. Um, county budget, we're doing well, and I give credit to Tyler and the other commissioners in the past that we're doing well because they focused on core core um, uh, responsibilities and, and didn't overextend themselves. I've been at meetings with other county commissioners where they, I was at one, I felt um, sheepishly embarrassed because they went around the room and said, what's your, your, your worst nightmare? And, and 
six of them ahead of me were saying it's our budget. We don't have any money, especially counties on the South Oregon coast that don't have timber receipts anymore. And so we got, okay, we don't, we're broke. We don't have any money. We can't even afford a sheriff, et cetera. And finally it got to me and I was like, uh, I I I I I <laughs> I pitched to a joke. I said we've been invaded by a cult from India that's using bioterrorism to try and thwart our elections, and and that got me out of the embarrassing position of saying we're doing fine, folks. We're doing it. so we're and so the county is doing well. Good, good. Any other questions? Lisa, would think I could sneak into one of the meetings with the Latinx um, group that you've had or with that? Oh, with the focus groups? Yeah. I don't see why not, Phil. Just send me an email to remind me. And as soon as we have them all scheduled, I'll get it to you. Is that meeting happening in Spanish? Uh, it most likely will. Uh, oh, if great. not, it'll be, if not, there will be an interpreter for both, but mm -hmm. I'm going to guess that they're in Spanish because that was one of the reasons we hired Nick Store to do these. Um, and be able to get that information. So yeah, send me an email to remind me. And then as soon as I have those scheduled, I will get you that schedule. I would love for you to sit in on that. Thank you. I'd love yeah. to. Bill, we're doing the same thing with Nextdoor, actually. We're meeting in November for a, a two or three hour session with some follow-ups as well. So um, okay. we can make sure you're aware of that. <clears throat> That's awesome. So um, no, it was very enlightening yesterday. <clears throat> Um, very educational. And the two that presented it kept it so that it didn't go super intense and make you feel awkward. It was collaboration and celebration that we're actually doing this. So it was very well done. Um, and we did ask some hard questions, but it wasn't done that uh, we we didn't want to speak. We weren't afraid to speak just because of the way they uh, facilitated it. So I was impressed with that. They were high energy girls, so they kept us going for four hours. So yeah, it was good. But if you guys don't have any more questions, I'm going to say we're done. And this girl's going to go and crash. Go crash. And, yes, okay, I'll go crash. And if you guys have any any. Any questions, just holler at my team. I have a great team and they can do it. They can do all of it. They take care of the office. I just pretend to look like I'm taking care of the office. So, um, but you guys have a great day and I will catch up with you guys next week. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.